Rocky and I are uh, getting a London tour. We're meeting all sorts of cool startups, and we're meeting some Rackers. Rackers are uh, Rackspace employees, and uh, we're meeting one special guy who is running marketing here in the EMEA region, which is Europe, and uh, we're going to learn what's going on on the street here in uh, Rackspace. Who are you? Fabio, uh, name's Fabio Torlini. I've been a long-term racker, 10 years in this company. I was here when it was a little tiny startup, really, about 10 of us, and there's a, a thousand of us here in the UK now. So, long time, a lot of sweat and blood, but a lot of great achievement, a lot of great fun. It's the main thing here at, here at Rackspace. When we built the office, we built the office about a year and a half ago. We just wanted to give it a great theme, you know. Rackers are here, they work hard. This is our home, you know, it's the home of fanatical support. And that's, that's why we built the office, and that's why it's got this theme. This is the garage. You know, we've got the living room upstairs, we've got the library, we've got the garden on the top floor. It's just a cool office, it's a cool environment, it's a fun environment. It's some place where rackers can be rackers. Yeah. You know, it's important. Where people can be relaxed, can be themselves, can have fun and work hard. And I bet you have lots of startups coming here and lots of entrepreneurs people and people who build big companies too. But yeah. um, what's happening here? What, what, what are they uh, showing you every week here? Well, the reason the startups come here is because we've just got a great, great, great story. You know, we were small. We were, we were a startup ourselves. We've only been here for ten years, and we've gone from zero to you know over two hundred million pounds in the UK, over a billion dollars as, as an organisation. We've got a great story. We've got a great position. You know, um, and if you look at our customer base, about about a third of our customers are startups. You know, we've got a great experience of working with startups. We know what it's about. You know, we've been one ourselves, and we work with them day in, day out. Uh, it's a great environment. It's a great environment where companies can actually get together to network, can learn from each other as well. Yeah. And so we work, work, work for a lot of the, the startup organizations that come in. Yeah, we, and we met a few already. Um, when you started here, it, it was Rackspace. So it was, you know, Rackspace put racks of mach machines in a server farm yeah. for companies. And now the world is different. It's cloud computing focused. What, What's that change been like for you? Oh, I mean, Rackspace has changed constantly over 10 years. When, when I walked in, I, I joined from a telco, um, and I saw these, these white boxes and these racks, and I almost had a heart attack. I thought, what, what have I joined? What is this place? Um, and you know, we were relatively happy when we sold a, a deal for like 200 pounds and, and a dedicated server. And over the years, the deals have just grown, and now we close you know, multi-million pound deals for really large organizations as well. And you know, we've remained really strong. We dominate the S&B market, but we've really started to crack into and open up the enterprise market as well. So just from a, a way we approach the market, who, who we sell to has changed. But then the technology, I mean, technology's just gone crazy. Um, you know, the way the cloud, the way the cloud has come in, you know, we only launched the cloud in the UK uh, a year and a half ago, and we've really n doubled the number of customers which we have, you know? Yeah. Um, overall, you know, cloud is now a major part of our business and just growing so rapidly in such a strong part of our, our portfolio. It's just amazing how quickly the technology is changing, you know, almost on a monthly basis. Yeah. Tell me about some of your favorite companies that you deal with. Oh, well, in, in terms of companies, we've got some great SaaS companies. You know, Huddle is, is, is a very good example, yeah. a very good, successful SaaS organization that's really built their solution on, on our infrastructure and so on. You know, we have, I, I, to be honest, I don't even know which customers, I, uh, companies I can talk about. Yeah, that's talk a about. tough thing as a being a racker, you, can't, you gotta be careful. <laughs> um, but we've got some very exciting organizations, you know, voucher type companies or uh, companies doing all kinds of social media. And most of them actually starting to build their organization straight into the cloud, you know. Whether it's companies doing streaming, streaming media directly over the cloud, you know, even globally. Cloud just allows people to do so much more. It's such a cost, cost effective, but also a way which delivers at, at, at a better, better rate, better solution as well. You know, it's a better experience at a better price. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that combination is just really driving people to utilize cloud, either by itself or in a combination with, with dedicated hosting. Yeah. So we, we've seen, seen it change so much. Since you've been here for 10 years, I bet you've hired a few people here, huh? I've hired plenty, yeah, yeah, I've hired plenty. I've had my mistakes, <laughs> but I've hired some great rackers as well. You know, when we hire people, we hire people on their attitude. Um, skill second, attitude first. You know, rackers first, they've got to fit into the culture, they've got to add to the culture, and that's what we aim to, aim to do. Tell me how you pick people and how you keep a culture, and, and tell me maybe a little bit about how uh, uh, Rackspace in Europe is different than maybe Rackspace in San Antonio or Rackspace in San Francisco. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, let's start how we pick people. You know, it's, it's, it's never easy. 
but first of all, we get to know the people. You know, we, we do some silly things sometimes. There's something they don't do in the US, something which you do here. We get them to draw a picture about, about themselves, and that's a nice icebreaker. The first conversation is about the person, about what makes them tick, you know, what drives them, you know, what they do outside of work. And that's the first conversation. Not about their CV and what their last job and why they moved on, it's about them. And that's, that's the key, you know. Uh, you know, start with the person, make sure they've got the right heart, make sure they've got the right attitude, and then we move on to experience. So uh, that's the fun part. We used to make people tell jokes and sing as well, which moved the, moved away from. Uh, some people found that a little bit You don't want me to sing, <laughs> believe me, you do not want me to sing. <laughs> so how, how does the, how have you tried to build the office here that's different than San Antonio or di different than San Francisco? Uh, well, we take It's the, very British here. We right. take the American <laughs> culture, we take the, uh, the attitude, the Texan attitude. I mean, it's, I think it's more than American, it's Texan. I mean, you go yeah. to San Antonio, it's just a, a friendly bunch, you know? They've got a lot of energy. We, we've kind of taken that, we've molded it and melded it with the, with the UK culture as well. You know, is it like Texas with a stiff upper lip? Or? It is, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we even see ourselves more fanatical than the guys in the US, you know. It's our own culture. And we like to think that we actually add to the culture. We're the ones who started the flags. You can see the flags in the office. Yeah. And then that got brought across to the US. That's so, very European, by the way. I, you know, if you go yeah. to a soccer game called football, right? Yes. We call it football something else over in <laughs> But you see people waving flags and stuff like that. Is that where you got the idea from? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's such a cosmopolitan office, you know. This is London, and half the people in London are not, not English. They come from other countries and so on. And, you know, when we look at this office, there's people who can speak about 20 different languages, and they come from all over the globe. And we just wanted to represent that multi multiculturalism we have in that, that, this, this office. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's just something which is great. It just gives a, the office a good atmosphere. And, again, it, it tells you something about the people sitting in the office. And then the U.S. took that idea, and, and it got enveloped into the overall rack-space culture. So yeah. we, we like to think that we give as well as we, we steal some of the culture. It's, 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 it's our own take on, on, on fanaticism. So uh, one thing Graham, our chairman, is so uh, fanatical about is the strengths uh, finder. Yes. And show me your badge. Okay, here's my badge. Here are my strengths. Some of them bad, some of them good. Well, tell me about them. Okay, so read through them. I'll read through them. I've got Achiever, Self-Assurance. Well, Achiever is somebody who just likes to get stuff done. Yeah. You know, likes to wake up in the morning, will create a list, and is only happy if he can tick, tick stuff off his list. You know, done, it's been put to bed, job finished. I've got self-assurance, which kind of speaks for itself. I'm a confident guy. Uh, competition, I'm in it to win it. I like to win. Individualization, it's not all about me. I do care about other people as well. Um, you know, start to understand people's individual strengths, what makes them tick, you know, how they like to be treated. And maximizer, which is something which Graham has as well, which is, I just like to get things done well, perfectly, which means I keep on looking at it and trying to improve, improve upon it as well. Yeah. So it's really good, you know, the strengths helps you understand the people you're working with. And that's where I was going. It was, how do you, how does that strengths find, by the way, we didn't develop that. Uh, it was developed over at Gallup, but yes. how, how does that help you build teams? Uh, well, the whole idea is that you don't have teams with the exact same strengths. You know, we're individuals. And what, what StrengthFind allows you to do is utilize a collection of strengths to come to the best, best outcome. And you know, if there's something which you're not, if analy analytical, for example, is your bottom strength, you're never gonna be the one in the team that does all of the numbers. So forget about that. No matter how much you work at it, you're not gonna be the numbers guy. Let the guy who's got analytical be the numbers guy in the team. You know, if you've got Wu, you're the guy who does the, the people element in the, in the teamwork. Wu is one of mine. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good skill. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's all about utilizing the team strengths and yeah. then really motivating the people in your, in your team for what they enjoy doing. This is what you're good at. People are happy when they do what they're good at. Yeah. Not trying to struggle with something which is just not you. You've got to be yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. That's why Rocky and I are so happy here. We get to do what we're good at and what we like to do. It's what's kept me here for 10 years. You know, the yeah. challenge, the fun, and I'm, I'm me. This is who I am. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for what you're doing. Um, what, what else is happening in the world? I mean, you're seeing, we touched on it a little bit when, as Rackspace is moving t toward a cloud computing company. Yes. What does that mean? And, and how are customers reacting to that? Yeah, good question. I mean, cloud's just a new technology. So, you know, we've seen it, and the US is, uh, sorry, the US is slightly ahead of the UK, we're slightly behind. Um, so, you know, we've probably seen it more recently than you guys. That there's a lot of confusion out there, you know, companies have been saying, okay, especially more traditional organizations have been saying, okay, cloud, how do I fit it into my IT strategy? What's it going to do for me? Is, is it secure enough to do what I, what I currently do? You know, how can I combine it with my current infrastructure to get 
get the maximum. So there's a lot of confusion there, so we have to do a lot of education. Whereas startups, you know, going back to your startup conversation, they're just going straight into the cloud. Yeah. You know, they just realize, look, what is the point of actually paying for the infrastructure can do this, when actually my needs are going to be completely flexible, so let me go for something which can match that, that flexibility. You know, my business is small. I need something which can be readily inexpensive, but can grow with me as I grow. So startups are going straight into the cloud, they get it, um, you know, even if they're not using it straight away for the, their production environment, they're definitely doing their test and dev in the cloud, and then moving that into a production environment in the cloud. Um, the more, uh, the older organizations are starting to use it more for test and dev, but they're not quite using their live, moving their live environments into the cloud yet, but it's starting to, it's yeah. starting to, it's coming. How, do, um, as a marketer, how, how do you see the world of, because I'm certainly seeing huge shifts in Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter, yeah. uh, my audiences are growing like nuts, right? I, in, in just a year, I got 1.7 million people on Google Plus, followers yes. on Google Plus. How's that changing marketing? Oh, it, it's changed marketing uh, dr dramatically, you know. Um, marketing is such a fast-paced, fast-moving environment itself. Uh, the way we need to communicate to our customers, you know, email is almost a dead tool. You know, people want to be talked in the way they, 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 they want the content. They get to choose the way they want to receive the message, they want to receive the content. They want to have conversations. Yeah. You know, it's not just about receiving a message, they want to be part of that, that, that conversation. So, you know, utilizing social media to, to reach out to our customers, involve our customers more, and actually what we're doing is, is such an important aspect of, of marketing today, which just, just wasn't five years ago. Very cool. Well, thanks so much for spending some time. Uh, where can I see you? Are you on any of these social places? Or do you have a blog? Uh, I am, I'm on Twitter and I, I blog on a very infrequent basis. Me too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, it's been Thank a you so much. Thank you. Thanks.